Okay. Okay, we're ready to get started. We called the meeting to order about an hour ago. We had an executive session. We're now back in open session. And we have the pleasure of starting tonight with a swearing-in ceremony for the new police officers. Chief Wells, thank you for joining us with your, your new officers. Thank you for having us. So I just a little brief overview, just to go back six months and about four weeks ago, you had five individuals in this room who you offered conditional officer appointment to. In December of, in December of 2013, 97 candidates began a six month and three week program at the Boston Police Academy. It was our first time engaged in a partnership with them. And tonight we're here, 68 graduated at the end of that class. It was a very rigorous, demanding, and understanding when you see the complexities associated with law enforcement in this country today, you understand why I needed so much. But uh, Amory had the pleasure of attending graduation with us. And even for me as a chief who's been to many, uh, it, it was shocking the things that the Boston Police Department had these kids do above and beyond the Monday through Friday, the curriculum, the academic, the physical, the, the tactical aspects of it. They did so many things on their own, everything from participating in memorial run to remember for law enforcement officers to volunteering at boys and girls clubs, blood drives, entering things like wiffle ball tournaments for inner city kids. They were part of the security deployment for the marathon in April. A lot of things that we've never ever done in, in a recruit environment before and <clears throat> all of us who were there um, were very pleased with what we had. So tonight you have four individuals and of the four, um, one of them, John Larson, is much like myself as a second generation working for the town of Milton. His dad, Malcolm Larson, was our fire chief for many years. Brian O'Rourke, his father, is the superintendent of the Bureau of Field Services of the Boston Police Department, the number three in command of the Boston Police Department. Patrick Nee, um, both his father and his brother were Boston police officers, and all these members were there. And the one I talk about last is the one who began writing me letters when he was 15 years old, articulating to me in writing how he wanted to one day be a police cadet. And today, this young man sits before you a, the future of your police department, and that is Travis Weeks. And I, I think we're all very proud to see that he rose to where he is today. So with that, we have Sue Galvin here, and we'll swear them in, and we'll make it very quick. And I thank you all for your participation in this process, and we welcome the future of this department to our community. Thank so with that, I'll have them stand, and we'll let um, Susan swear them all. Susan, you swear them all again? They don't know what to do, because <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time to refer. It's not like they're, 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 their formal graduates was very regimented, yes. so they're up there. They're used to being uh, yelled at. So with that, uh, I walk with my town clerks from beyond. So, gentlemen, if you could all raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties incumbent upon me as a police officer of the town of Milton. As a police officer of the town of Milton. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to. And will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the bylaws of the town of Milton. And the bylaws of the town of Milton. And that I will fairly. Fairly, and equitably execute, and equitably execute the, laws thereof, the laws thereof within the extent of my authority and jurisdiction. Within the extent of my authority and jurisdiction. So help me God. So help me God. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. John Lassen, Travis Weeks. Congratulations. Mr. Hayes, yep. Mr. Hurley. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank
So with that, we thank you very much for your assistance and your support. And what you have in Good luck, guys. Thank you, too. Congratulations. Good luck, guys. Yep. We'll see you on the road. Well done. Again. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a nice way to start the meeting. It was. Okay. First item on our agenda is approval of meeting minutes for June 10th. Move approval of June 10th, 2014 uh, meeting minutes. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, we're confirming our future meeting dates. Uh, we do have a meeting scheduled for July 21st at 6.30, and in our executive session we added a meet. We have a, we're going to schedule, a, we'll mention this later, we're going to schedule a, a public a forum or a public meeting for the water and sewer plan, and we'll add a selectman's meeting on Monday night, July 7th. The forum starts at 7 p.m., and after, so, so we'll notice it for 7 p.m. So Monday, July 7th at 7 p.m., and July 21st at 6.30. The Council on Aging? Or? No, it's in the Cronin Conference Room. Oh, it is, okay. Yes. Were you talking, Tom, about the, the July 7th? Yes. It's in the July 7th Conference. this year? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, approval of payroll and vendor warrants. I'll move approval of the current payroll and vendor warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, citizen Speak. Do we have anyone here who would like to address the board at Citizen Speak? Mr. Mullen. Good evening. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Peter Mullen, uh, 19 Gaskins Road, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 2. Um, as I understand it, um, Hendry's and 131 Elliott Street is um, on your agenda tonight. Uh, and as I understand it, the question before the uh, Board of Selectmen is going to be um, special legislation that would authorize the selectmen uh, to sell the town-owned portion of uh, that property at the Henry's building um, uh, outside the usual procurement rules uh, directly to a Conley controlled entity uh, for use in connection with a uh, mixed-use uh, planned unit development at that site. Um, my understanding is that this proposal comes out of some discussions that were uh, initiated by uh, Senator Joyce and have involved a representative of the selectmen, a representative of the planning board. Um, and I, I guess I come um, in support of this legislation. Um, I think people should be reassured that um, this is not some kind of a sweetheart deal. Um, that. Uh, the last time that uh, this property was uh, put up for request for proposals, um, the uh, appraiser who appraised the property came in with a, an appraisal, I believe, of uh, $200,000 for the property. Um, I believe that the property has been put up um, and bidders have been invited to bid twice over the last, uh, I think it's about five years, um, and the only people who have ever bid um, are the Conleys. Um, and the last time they bid, uh, I believe it was $1 um, for the property. Um, the, um, as I understand it, the proposed special legislation um, would authorize the transfer of this land to a Conley controlled entity in return for the Conleys uh, assuming the costs of demolishing the town owned portion of that building. Um, I believe the estimated cost of that town-owned portion is $250,000. Um, so I think it's a net plus for the town um, if uh, this were to go through. Um, I think it also would be a net plus for the town um, if we ended up with a mixed-use development there. Um, I don't think this certainly would guarantee uh, that that would happen, um, but I think it's a step in that process. Um, as I understand it, the legislation would authorize the selectmen to make the transfer on these terms, um, but it wouldn't require the transfer on these terms, and that the selectmen can then see what happens before the planning board uh, and whether that um, a mixed use, an application for a mixed use development is made and whether it's uh, um, approved by the, the planning board. 
Um, I think there's a number of additional steps that need to be made here, uh, but my understanding this is one of the first steps um, and that there's a time limit because the legislature will recess for at least this uh, session of the legislature uh, at the end of July. Um, so I guess I appear and uh, urge the selectmen to adopt uh, the special legislation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the board at Citizen Speak? Peter Jackson. Good evening, Peter. Good evening. Good. Um, I'm Peter Jackson. I live at 14 Capon Street, and I'm town meeting member from Precinct 2. Um, I think the, um, I, what Peter discussed about this special legislation, I'm coming opposed to uh, um, adopting that or, or asking the legislature to adopt that. Um, I feel that the, the town made great strides uh, with the property owner in negotiating a demolition agreement and, in, and really in many years that's the first successful negotiation we've been able to have with the developer I think it's I think the town should go ahead and complete that process um, where uh, the, the owner and the town jointly demolish the the property and secure it get fencing around it and secure it and complete that process at that time would be an appropriate time to reconsider redevelopment options for that site and the redevelopment options as I understand it, are, are a 40B housing development um, or a mixed-use development under the zoning that was passed uh, to cover that property. I don't think rushing um, a uh, legislation is uh, in the town's best interest at this time. I think uh, the better approach is to wait and see. I don't think um, not moving on this really expedited schedule that's been suggested uh, really precludes a mixed-use development there. Um, I, I think there's continues to be the opportunity to get the owner uh, back in, in front of the planning board um, with a mixed-use development. And if he chooses not to, I don't fear the results of a 40B process. I think it would be a long and involved process, and there's a lot of steps that he would go through. Uh, the biggest downside of that is not getting a commercial part of it, but then the town conceivably could develop its uh, part of the property as a commercial development. Um, so I um, urge you not to suggest this really rushed legislation, particularly if it's tied to a pre-agreed process with the planning board. I attended the last planning board meeting, and the impression was given that there was an intention that an application would be prepared, seen for the first time, a public hearing, and being adopted all within one night, and that's just not possible. Um, so I don't think it. I don't think there's a, the rush that some people perceive that there is, and I think you should uh, go slow, let the demolition happen, and then we'll continue to discuss this. I'm sure for quite a while to come. Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Anyone else for citizen speak? Margaret Donovan. Margaret, good, good evening. Good evening. Margaret Donovan, 41 Central Avenue. And uh, this is the first time I've heard about special legislation. I do not recall that, that the subject was brought up at any public me meeting prior to this. So I am s somewhat surprised to hear uh, my two predecessors here at Citizens Speak talk about uh, something that has not been discussed in, the, in a public meeting. Uh, as far as 131 Elliott Street, zero, zero Central Avenue, um, I think that the town should go forward, should demolish the building, and then come back with a plan. Um, the 40B is certainly not an attractive option. It would be much better to have condominium unit owners um, in charge of their own uh, units, and, and also, um, in charge of the parking and the um, and the garage situation there. I believe that we are also going to, I've mentioned this to you before, and that with the loss of the parking lot at 36 Central Avenue, we're gonna have a nightmare of a parking situation. It's already developing right now, 
in the Central Avenue Business District, and if provision isn't made for parking, uh, for public parking at that site, then, as I said, this is going to be worse than East Milton Square. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Would anyone like, else like to address the board at Citizen Speak? Okay, then if not, uh, we'll close Citizen Speak. And the next item on our agenda is a public hearing uh, regarding a gas main installation on Lyman Road. Do we have a representative for National Grid present? Hello. Good evening. Hey, Dawn. Would you just state your name for the record? And I'm the permanent representative for National Grid. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. I didn't get your name. Dennis Regan. Dennis Regan. Mr. Regan, thank you. And, uh, tonight, National Grid respectfully requests your consent to install and maintain approximately 90 feet, more or less, of four-inch gas main in Lyman Road, Milton. From the existing four-inch gas main at house number 211, westerly to house number 203 for a new gas service. Dennis, does the, um, I just have a question. Sure. So the, obviously the gas line does not go all the way down Lyman Road. No. It stops. Yes. Yeah. I got this, I saw the map the other day. And this is a new house? I'm not sure if it's a new house or not. You know if it's a new house, Tom? Two I don't know. We're not allowed, like you know, the, the rules yeah. with the, with the um, deregulation to, to speculate. So that's why we're only right. allowed to go that far to the to the customer that worked this arrangement out with. But this is a customer service. requesting gas service. Yes. Yes. Okay. Where it is a public hearing? Is there anyone else from the public who would like to address this request for a a gas main on Lyman Road? I guess no. I'll make a motion to approve a request from National Grid to install and maintain approximately 90 feet more or less of four inch gas main in Lyman Road from the existing four inch gas main at house number 211, westerly to house number 203 for a new gas service. Second. Any discussion? If not, I'll just note that the DPW recommends that we approve this request. Okay, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Much. Regan. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number seven is a public hearing on a conduit installation on Forbes Road, and I believe this one is with NSTAR. Do we have a representative of NSTAR here? And is there anyone from the public who would like to address the board on this request? Okay, could you state your name for the record? I'm Sheila Gillis, here on behalf of NSTAR Electric. Thank you, Ms. Gillis. Uh, we request a grant of location to install approximately nine feet of conduit from poles 270 over 12. And this is necessary to provide an overhead service, an underground, underground service, yeah. to 118 Forbes Road. Okay. And again, like the previous one, this is a hearing that's been noticed in the paper. And I'll just ask once more, we don't have any, do we have anyone who'd like to address the board on this? No. This I'm is seeing not any discussion. It's a beautiful new house up on uh, Forbes Road. Overlooking the water right now. Big. I'll make a motion Big. to approve a request from NSTAR for permission to install approximately nine feet of conduit at pole 270 12 Forbes Road to provide underground overhead, underground electric service to 118 Forbes Road. Second. Any discussion? And again, we have a memo from the DPW recommending approval of this request. Okay, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Gillis. Good Thanks night. for coming in. We'll close the public hearing. Okay, number eight uh, is a discussion on the topic of Zero Central Avenue. Zero Central Avenue is the town-owned land at the, on which sits some portion of the former Henry's Ice Cream Factory building. This is the land that the town acquired about 11 years ago. We did have a, well, I'll just give some background on this. Um, we, we had a discussion of this in an executive session earlier this evening before we, um, began the, the public session of the meeting. The, this topic came up because as Alex Whiteside, who is the chairman of the planning board, reported at last week's planning board meeting, Senator Brian Joyce, who lives not far from this location and has had an interest, I think, in this building, along with many of the other residents of the area, had invited Alex Whiteside as the chair of the planning board, myself as chair of the board of selectmen, and Jerry Conley, who's the principal of Carrick Realty, which owns the adjoining property at 131 Elliott Street, to a meeting we met two, two Saturdays ago, um, had a discussion about 
where we were at, as everyone I think probably knows, a project eligibility letter has been issued by, by a state agency for a 40B application that was submitted by the Connollys or by Carrick Realty. And so that, that would, would now advance to the next stage, which the next step there would be a, a hearing before, or, or proceeding, I guess is the right word, before the Board of Appeals. We did have a discussion with Mr. Connolly, Senator Joyce, Mr. Whiteside, and myself to talk about where we were at, what we thought might be the best use of the property, the town-owned portion as well as, as well as the adjoining Henry's portion. And at that meeting, a lot of different ideas were discussed, but um, one item that was suggested was that if the town were, if the boards and I think in, in the town and people who have an interest in this area were interested in trying to proceed with a mixed-use development, which was what the PUD zoning had been created for back in 2006, what had been worked towards for a number of years. Um, there had been a, a request for a special permit before the planning board that was denied a couple of years ago. This board has had some discussions last year with the Connollys in terms of the town-owned portion of the land. Um, and now we're at the stage where, where we have a 40B project eligibility letter issued, not, not yet before the Zoning Board of Appeals. But taking all of that into consideration, if, if the thinking were that a mixed-use development, which would bring a commercial component into it, as it currently stands, the 40B proposal does not have a commercial component to it. If a, and the mixed-use proposal, at least the one that was before the planning board a number of years ago had, I believe it was 36 units, whereas the 40B proposal is for 57 units. If there were a way that we could encourage a return to the mixed use, either as an alternative to the 40B or maybe as, as a, something that might be considered at this stage of the game, um, there were a couple of ideas that were put out. One was that maybe the planning board could recon reconsider or at least bring the topic back to their table. And I think there are some procedural questions as to whether it would be a new application or whether there would be a way to reopen it. Th those are planning board issues that we don't have to get into. But the idea would be that the planning board would bring this back up and it would become a topic to be considered again by the planning board. And that the, the selectmen, given our role in connection with the town owned land, one option might be to seek special legislation in order to transfer the property to the owner of 131 Central, which would be the Connollys, 131 Elliott Street, which is the, the Connolly building, um, without going through the normal procurement process, which would require an appraisal and, and perhaps seeking an RFP for an appraisal to begin with, or maybe not. I think we've done both in the past. Um, possibly, and, not, and not involving town meeting to sell the property. This would be special legislation would be an alternative to a town meeting article to transfer or to, or to sell the property. Um, and to sell it for what the selectman might consider fair value. We're current, we currently have a demolition agreement with the Connollys and I think the town administrator will be able to give us some updates just on on, and we'll go, we'll go to that in a couple of minutes as to where we're at with some of the proceedings under the current demolition agreement that we're still bound by, Connolly is bound by, um, and that we're proceeding under. But this would be an alternative to 40B so that the developer might, developer might go down the route of the 40B application and also can go through a planning board process and see which, which of those routes might yield the best result, so to speak. So. Um, so I think I can report, we did have a discussion, an executive session. What we agreed to do is to have a further executive session on Monday evening at our meeting on July the 7th. As I said at the beginning, we're going, we have a meeting scheduled that night because our water and sewer consultants are having a public forum. We're going to schedule it as a board of selectmen meeting, have a meeting, have a further discussion of it that night but we'll notice it both for executive session and open session and, and have a discussion really um, at that time to, con to consider some of these issues. So I, I think that's, that's what I can report, that we, we, we're considering it. There's, there's different issues that it presents and um, I, you know, 
personally, I, I, I think we would view this as um, an opportunity that Senator Joyce presented to us as something to be considered by the board, and, and we've, we are in the process of considering it and in, in, in weighing the merits of it and, um, and what the pros and cons are. And there are multiple issues, so it's, it's one of these things where we, we need to have sufficient time to give it some consideration, digest the issues, come back and have a further conversation about it and further discussion. Um, does anyone want to, we have it scheduled as a discussion, does anyone want to add anything to that? Or? I think you said it all, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear about the demolition actually. Uh, today is July 1st, and as you know, in the demolition agreement that um, we signed with the Conleys, we, uh, the town, we're supposed to put out our RFP for the demolition of the town-owned portion of the property, and we did that today, um, we did that late in the afternoon, and we are scheduled um, to go to the Conservation Commission meeting in July um, to address the conservation issues. So we are on target with the demolition agreement that we did sign with the dates that we are supposed to be complying with to date. And the deadline for the building, both buildings is September? September, third? yes, the end of September, yes. That's good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we can report too, there's been some work by the Connolly side in terms of some of the prep work on their building, some work by us on the prep work yes. on our building. We've gotten the hazmat study done. We, we did our hazmat um, study by Green Environmental. The Conleys uh, pumped out the water in the basement of their building, and, and they have done some of the abating in their building as well. So some preliminary work has been. Um, Will the Conleys be going to Conservation Commission? On the my understanding season? that they're supposed to be going to the Conservation Commission in July as well. Okay. I think it's a joint yes. appearance yes. before the Conservation Commission, yes. as I understand it. So I think that we have gotten some requests from, especially from people who live in the area of the Henry's building. So some work has been done towards the demolition agreement where op both sides are operating under that agreement because that is what governs us right now. And um, we, can, we can proceed on a number of paths here, but we'll have, we'll have further discussion on the issue on, on Monday evening. Anyone, anything to add? We had some comments at Citizen Speak tonight. Um, on this topic, yeah, but I mean, both the, obviously the, the two comments were on opposite sides of the of the fence, uh, and they were both well stated, uh, and and probably similar things to what we've been trying to bat around ourselves. So. Okay. Any other discussion on this topic? And if if sure. not, we will continue it on Monday evening. Okay. Then we'll go on to number nine on our agenda, which is a Copeland grant for the Council on Aging. I'll move to accept uh, a grant in the amount of $25,000 from the Copeland Family Foundation to the Council on Aging to be used for the support of the Council's van services. Second. Any discussion? As usual, just uh, a lot of thanks has to be given to the Copeland Foundation for their uh, never-ending generosity to this town and, and especially to the Council on Aging. Who, I will second that. Who really needs the, the support. They do. Yeah. And the Council on Aging has an ever-growing population that it serves. Yes. And, they uh, do operate in a small budget. They do. They do. So with our thanks to the Copeland Foundation, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> okay, number 10. Should we go on and take this one ourselves or are we going to wait for Brian? We'll take it ourselves. Okay. Um, but before, before number 10, Madam Chair, you have a second Copeland grant. Um, uh, it's a $15,000 grant for the DARE camp. I think somehow it's attached. If you click on your um, roadway intersection design grant, it's going to be there. Somehow it got attached to that one. But there is a second, again, generous grant from the Copeland okay. Family Foundation yep. for the DARE right. camp, which is a two-week okay. camp in the summer. Um, click on number 10. Yeah. Okay. okay. So do we have a motion to accept? Let me just go back and get the language from the earlier I'll make one. a motion to accept a $15,000 donation from the Copeland Family Foundation to be used for the D.A.R.E. program. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. All right. Number 10. Uh, is a discussion of the Mattapan Blue Hill Avenue Roadway Intersection Design Grant 
and we have a report from the town administrator on this. Yes, Madam Chairman, this is um, there's a, a state contract before you to um, approve and authorize your town administrator to sign. It is a grant for a design work for the phase one project of the Blue Hills Parkway project, which was a multi-phase project. I believe it started down at Canton Ave and Blue Hills Parkway with the lights, and then um, it continued further down towards Madpan with the streetscape. And now this is the um, ending phase, which is called phase one, and it will um, be um, streetscape, pedestrian enhancements, and uh, vehicular um, safety issues, and it's going to incorporate Blue Hills Parkway, Blue Hill Ave, Brush Hill Road, Elliott Street, and Brook Road. So About it's the a, lower end of all of those. The lower end, right up to the Mattapan line. So we will have to be um, work in conjunction with um, with Boston and the state agencies in Boston. So it will run to the Mattapan, or, or right to the to, Mad, to the Boston line. Okay, from yes. from whereabouts? Um, right right from the right by, right by where the food mart is. Okay. Food mart. Okay. Down. Down. Yes. Okay. And um, so we're going to we receive. So basically, Brook Road down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But incorporating all those other streets. Right. As well. Which Brook Road does run across all those, so it's that's probably a good demarcation. <coughs> Brook Road down. Okay. Yes. And we will be receiving three hundred thousand for the di design phase of the project, and then um, the project should cost approximately three million dollars, and that will be in the fiscal fifteen um, capital bond bill. And Brian Joyce, our, our senator, was very instrumental in getting. Very instrumental. Very, this, very instrumental this in getting this project put together. But many thanks to Senator Joyce. Yes. That. Yeah, that's worth yep. noting. This is a. Uh, I was hoping that he was going to be here tonight to announce this project himself, but he tied up, in the tied up with the legislature this evening. Was mm -hmm. hoping to be here, but unfortunately, they're having a late session. Well, it is the end of their legislative session, as yes. we know. So. Yeah. It is very busy on this, on Beacon Hill, as uh, as we've been told. But I, I agree, we should extend our thanks to Senator Joyce. This is a this is an important intersection into town. Oh, so it is. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a gateway from. It's a gateway. That yeah, into and town. having some improvements there are, 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 like like other areas in town, well needed. So. Yep. So I think this will be money put to good use. Absolutely. Okay, so do we have a motion? I'll move to approve the contract uh, between the town and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for funds to be utilized by the town and its traffic consultants solely for the redesign of the roadway intersection segments encompassing Mattapan Square to the intersection uh, with Blue Hill Avenue, Blue Hills Parkway, Brush Hill Road, and Elliott Street, and to authorize the town administrator to sign on behalf of the board. Second the motion. Any discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Number 11 is some appointments to boards and committees. I'll move to approve the appointments of Carolyn Everett, Regina Dobson, and Barbara Jackson to the Council on Aging to serve through June 2017. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move to approve the appointment of Bernard J. Lynch, the third to the Local Emergency Planning Committee to serve through June 2015. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, town Administrator's Report. Yes, Madam Chair, I have um, a couple things to report. First, it was the, um, I wanted to let the public know that there will be a public meeting on Monday, uh, July 7th at 7 p.m. Uh, the discussion will be the water and sewer rate structure for the town of Milton. Um, so I did want to report that out. Um, another issue I'd like to report out is a meeting that was held on June 27th, um, and it was a meeting with the chair attended, uh, the chair of the Board of Health attended, Roxanne Musto, the um, health director, Carolyn Kinsellar, the assistant town administrator, Michael Blanchard, uh, your CAC rep, Chris Zambudo. And um, what we discussed was the airplane issues impacting the town and um, the health concerns um, that were addressed at the Board of Health meeting. And we, um, we talked about, it was kind of an overview on the residents' complaints and the emails that we've been receiving recently. Um, we talked about the role of the CAC and the discussion about the Phase Three Blands project. Um, but the most important piece that we talked about was strategy with regards to um, how to address this, this all-encompassing issue. And um, I think what we decided was that um, the Board of Health and the, and the Board of Selectmen should jointly form a committee 
uh, to address airplane um, noise and health issues in the town and um, have a member of the Board of Selectmen on the committee, um, a member of the Board of Health on the committee, your um, health director, um, the assistant town administrator, the CAC rep, um, the alternate CAC rep, which is David Godine, who has a wealth of historical knowledge being on that CAC committee for a number of years. Um, and the uh, Board of Health is going to reach out to some type of um, person that's in the medical field to see if they would also um, be willing to serve on the committee and then potentially a resident of the town as well. Now, would this committee be strictly health issues or would it be health and noise issues? Or it's, it's both, health, health. noise. Okay. It's, it's, it's health, um, noise, um, impact um, to the town. Um, and So um, is this the committee that we've been talking about? It's the committee that you have been talking about, yes. Okay. So uh, the, the chair of the Board of Health is going to uh, discuss this meeting that we held on June 27th with her board. And um, then I will be putting this on your July 21st agenda. Um, and the Board of Health chair, or potentially maybe the whole committee, we'll come into um, our meeting. will be here. And you'll have a joint meeting. Very and good. you will um, form the committee and name the, um, the people that you want on the committee. And, and in the meantime, um, I will work with your assistant town administrator to draft a charge mm -hmm. for that committee. Emory, can you say one more time the, who's going to be on this committee? Yes, it would be a, a, a member of the Board of Selectmen, yeah. a member of the Board of Health, the assistant town administrator, the health director, the uh, CAC rep, the CAC alternate rep, um, hopefully a member of the medical community and a resident of the town. So that would be two residents of the town, medical and a regular resident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. I think it's good. Yeah. I'm, maybe they're not ready to speak to it yet, but I, at that meeting, could you ask the Board of Health if they might be ready to speak to the report that was done by um, um, I'm not sure what the health means. study. The health study mm -hmm. that was done. Um, I know it was sanctioned by the Commonwealth. I don't know who actually performed the study, uh, but I would like to get feedback on on that. Yes, I'll absolutely. I'll speak to um, the health director. Okay. She also attended a webinar that kind of broke down that whole mm -hmm. Logan Airport Health Study report. So mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll have no problem updating you on that. Um, the next item is a meeting that I attended this Monday, June 30th, on the East Milton deck with the um, Howard Stein Hudson representatives and Massport, um, I'm sorry, Mass Highway representatives. <laughs> um, switching gears here. Um, and we, we wanted to walk the, the site of the East Milton deck, the park, and where the parking is going to go. And, um, and make sure that Mass Highway was comfortable with what is being proposed so that they can um, go back and uh, potentially talk to the Federal Highway and make sure that everybody's on board with the uh, streetscapes and the changes that we're uh, proposing there. Um, we hope to have, at the end of July, the um, public hearing on the 25% design phase. Um, I, I believe it's the end of July, yes. yeah. That'll be the first meeting? First, very first meeting. You have to have a 25 and then 50 and then 75%. I think it's 25, 75. 25, 75? 75. Yeah. I don't think it's a 50. And that yeah, meeting is held by, by whom? Howard Stein Hudson. Okay. I don't have a date yet. Once I get the date, I will let you know, and I'll put it up on the town website. But the, the next meeting we have should be some very specific design plans mm -hmm. to look at. Yes. So right now, the engineering study, has that been done? Has that been completed? The engineering on the deck? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Wasn't that part of the, of the well, first phase? I don't phase know if it's the, part the of the 25. The whole phase is the design, which would probably yeah, be engineering as well. But, um, but it's, a, it's a design phase that Howard Stein Hudson is doing. Yeah. Yes. I don't know and if And that first meeting they had was the 25%, um, which they're still in the process of. I think the, one of the first, the first uh, things they were doing was determining if the deck was strong enough to hold up. Wasn't, wasn't that part of their 
the first phase of the of I thought design. they were already at the design stage and it, we were mm. beyond that, but that's I'm not you can certainly that. make that make that inquiry. But yeah, I can find out for you. Yeah. But what they told us at the public hearing, wasn't it, that they that we had a few weeks ago, that they would be back with some more detailed and more specific answers to some of the questions people raised about sidewalk locations and things like that. So right. that there'd be more public input at, at that stage. And I believe they were doing more studying of the slip lane, whether yes. to have the slip lane or not to have the slip lane. They had to do the traffic counts. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I that's what but that, 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 that deck was definitely built uh, with the types of support that would support parking. Yeah. Oh, I, I have no doubt. I, I think they were just determining <clears throat> that. They were just making sure that that is correct. Correct, yeah, yeah. But, you know, and that was, again, whether that was part of the design <coughs> phase or, or whether that was done before, I'm not sure. I think I'll that was the very point. first part of this 25%. Uh, it may have been. It may have been. We can. We can, yeah. we don't have it as an agenda item to discuss, it's just part of the town administrator's report so we could schedule it if we mm -hmm. wanted to have further discussion on it before, before that meeting is scheduled if there is time. Okay. Do we have anything else for the town administrator's report? That's it. Okay. For the chair's report, the only thing I have to report is um, just a reminder to the general public that tomorrow is the first start of our new trash collection schedule. So Wednesdays and Thursdays are our new trash pickup days. Sunrise Scavenger is the name of the vendor. We'll see on the green trucks with the name Sunrise Scavenger on them. That, the change of day is really the only change that people should notice. Um, everything else, recycling, process, trash, everything stays the same. So I'm sure we'll have some, you can't really go through a big transition like this without having a few little Pick bumps ups. in the road yep. here and there, but hopefully they'll be isolated. And if anyone does have a problem, they should contact the DPW. But um, hopefully overall it will be a smooth process and it's starting tomorrow. Yes. Good. Okay. Um, do we have anything for citizen speak response? I can't remember. <laughs> Last citizen speak or this one? Or either this either one. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. You, it's hard to remember what happened at the last citizen speak. But. Well, it can be, it it can be tonight's yeah. citizen speak. Oh, I, 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 I thought the three people that, that spoke tonight um, were all very eloquent in what they said. And, um, I think they made some good points. Um, I don't have much in response to it because it was still an executive session on it, obviously, and not a lot that we can really talk about until we come to some conclusion about it. But, um, but it, you know, I think it certainly gives us some good things to think about. Okay. Anything else for citizen speak response on this or any topic? No. Okay. Then next meeting agenda items. Does anyone have anything to add? We do already have a list of a few things that we want to schedule for the next couple of meetings. Um, do we have anything to add? For the 20, 21st. 21st. Well, for, for any meeting, really, any upcoming meeting, because it could be a matter of working out a schedule with someone who we might want to put it on, but they may not be available on the 21st. So just any topics in the, general the that we want to bring we, up. The only thing we may want to, um, because I, I think we will have not finalized it in the sense of, of making it in presentation form, but at least had our basic last meeting on the um, five-year on five-year plan. So I might just want to give a, mm -hmm. a five quick year plan. update on that. Update on the five-year plan. Okay. So there's a fair amount involved in just kind of to get it presentation ready to develop all the assumptions, yes. uh, the myriad of assumptions that we okay. came up with in order to, to do the projection of, mm -hmm. of the forecast. Okay. Okay. If nothing else, then I will move that we enter executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining strategy, contracts, Milton Public Employees Association, police patrol officers, and police chief, believing that having these discussions in open session would violate the bargaining position of the body and to return to open session to adjourn. Second. Uh, yes. Mr. Mr. Coyne, yes. Yes. Yes, and myself, yes. Okay, we're in executive <coughs> session. See you, Frank. <laughs>